Now let's go ahead and see that how we can delete a movie. I'm going to go ahead and say deleting a movie. We will use the same route, meaning you will simply say movies slash and then passing in the ID of the movie that you want to delete. Like that. The difference will be that we will be using the delete HTTP method, not the post, not the get. We will say movies and then some sort of a route parameter, which I'm just going to use ID. Request, async, that's the same thing, throws in. And now we need to delete the movie. But in order to delete the movie, the first thing we need to do is to find the movie that we're trying to delete. If you remember earlier, we already had the code which was able to find a particular movie based on the ID. So we can simply copy that code and we'll get the movie. If we don't get the movie, then it's going to simply throw the bad request. Next, we can delete the movie by simply calling movie.delete on request.db. Now this is an async function and it's a throwable function. So we're gonna make sure that we use try await. And once the movie has been deleted, we will return the movie to the user, the one that they deleted. So that will be returned to them, but it will be deleted from the database. Let's go ahead and run our application. And we are going to try to delete a particular movie. So let's go to Postman. Let's say that we want to delete Iron Man. So the first thing we need to do is to get the ID of the Iron Man. We will copy this whole URL, which already contains the ID for Iron Man, I think. Let's go ahead and run this. So this gives me the movie. It doesn't delete the movie because we're still using the get HTTP method. We have to use delete HTTP method. Now, if we pass in this particular ID, it should delete the movie associated with that ID, which is Iron Man. And it returns the same exact movie deleted. Now you can obviously return anything you want, but I'm just returning the movie that got deleted. Now, in order to make sure that Iron Man was deleted, I can go back, change the URL to simply go and get all the movies. You can see that the URL is simply saying movies and make sure that Iron Man is not there. You can see Iron Man is not there. This means Iron Man is deleted. If I wanted to delete Aquaman, I can simply go over here, use the ID for Aquaman, and that will delete that movie too. Let's go ahead and get all the movies, and Aquaman is also gone. So this is how you will delete a movie when you're using Vapor. This video is brought to you by my latest course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Swift UI and Vapor. This is a 12 hour course, which takes you on a journey of creating a full stack application. This means that you are not only going to learn the Swift UI, which is the client side, but you're also going to be learning about the server side. You will create your own server using Vapor and you will integrate it with Postgres database. You will also learn about MongoDB protecting route authentication using JWT deployment middleware, so much more, so much more. This is a complete course. If you wanted to learn full stack development, then this is the only course you need. 12 hour course, already have 200 plus students registered. If you want to register for this course, then check out the YouTube description. There's a link and click on that link. Use that link to register and enroll in this course. Thank you so much. Let's get back to the video. All right, everyone. So now let's go ahead and look at how can we update an existing movie. So update a movie. For update, I'm going to go ahead and implement put. Now, if you see over here, you have put and you also have patch. Put is used to update the entire object if you plan to get the object from the database and simply assign some properties. You can use put, you can use patch, that's perfectly fine. I usually just use put, but you can use patch, put, whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and say movies and then request async throws 
aim and now we need to update a particular movie now whenever we are updating you can pass the id i guess in the url if you want to but i like to pass the id in the actual body which means the content so i can get the content with the updated movie meaning all the stuff that we want to update so i'm just going to decode my body to self and this is going to give me the edited movie meaning the movie that will contain all the updated information probably the user has inserted that information in a text box and then they have press a button to perform this put request the other thing we want to do is to find the movie like the actual movie that we want to update so we can use the find function which we have learned about earlier and we can find the movie this is the movie that we want to update so this is the movie in the database we want to update and now we can assign the movie that we have uh, that we want to update and we can assign different things like the title and this is the edited movie or right, edited movie dot title you can call this something else also like instead of calling it edited movie uh, i mean this is movie that you're decoding so you can say movie if you want to that's fine too basically this movie will have all the information that the person is posting to the server okay this is where we are updating the title updating the title of the movie once we have updated the title of the movie the all we need to do is to call movie to update dot update on request dot db and we will perform this with try await once the movie has been updated we can return the updated movie to the user okay let's go ahead and mark this with try because the decoding can actually fail and it's a throwable function so we will mark this with try and now we can go ahead and try to see that if we can update the movie or not so let's go ahead and run our server the path is still the same it's basically slash movies but this time you have to use the put and whenever we are trying to update a movie make sure that you are passing in the correct id so if i go to my over here to my server i can get all of these ids right uh, what i want to do is let's go ahead and find a movie like batman is fine i'm going to get the id of the batman that's the most important part when you are updating a movie let's uh, change this to put and the url will be just the movies so a couple of different things that you need to do you can see the put because we're trying to update the movie the url is simply movies okay headers let's see what headers we have okay content type and all that stuff so these are all the headers that are automatically added using postman uh, one of the headers that i really want to add just to tell my server that hey we'll be sending on json is application json over here so make sure that you have this header i think this is one of the most common things people forget to add content type and it has to be spelled that way and it had the value has to be application json now we'll go to body and i'll select raw raw simply means that i will be typing valid json so what do i need to type in there well i'll type in id because that's the id that i'm trying to update that's the actual movie and the title because i want to update this into a new title so i'm just going to change the new title to batman begins originally the title is simply batman but i'm changing it to batman begins the id is the same and make sure that when you're updating something when you're deleting something you are using their id to update or delete if you simply use the name batman then there might be 100 movies that are called batman you don't really want to delete or update all of the movies you just want to 
probably you just want to update one movie or delete one movie. So I'm going to go ahead and send the request. It does return me the same ID because the ID is not changed and it returns me the updated name of the movie. Okay, this looks good, but let's go and check if I get all the movies, do I get Batman Begins or not? And I do. I do get Batman Begins. This is indicating that the data has been updated in the database and now the title of the movie is no longer Batman, it is Batman Begins. So in this section, we have basically covered, uh, we did a quick tour of Vapor with Postgres database. And I really would encourage you to perform or do this section multiple times. And the reason for this is that this section is going to allow you to set up your LFN SQL, adding the Fluent package, creating the models, creating the tables with migrations, because in the next section, we'll be looking into a grocery application where we can uh, create a user, where we can go ahead and also make sure that we can, you know, add some grocery items for the user and we can add some uh, grocery stores or categories for the user. So we will have to do all of those different things again and again, which I will show you in our starter project. All right, so make sure that you watch this section multiple times because it has a lot of good information uh, which will be very, very applicable for all the future sections. Thank you.